Frankie Ice, Frank Isola from the New York Daily News. Frankie caught my attention when, uh, you yeah, know, it was great. The Knicks got a new head coach, David Fisdale, but all of a sudden you started to attach LeBron James' name to this. Um, how much of a role do you think that played, if any, in Fisdale being hired as the Knicks head coach? Oh, I definitely think, uh, how you doing, Dan? I definitely Good, think that uh, it has uh, obviously something to do with it because the Knicks were – selling this idea after the season that they were looking for a coach that could connect with today's players that has relationships with them. By then they had already reached out to David Fisdale and, you know, obviously David Fisdale in his time with the Miami Heat organization, close relationship with LeBron, Dwayne Wade. It's always a little bit different too when you're the assistant coach, but go back to when he was hired by Memphis. Remember LeBron and Dwayne Wade really came out and were, you know, LeBron, I think his comment was, I'm going to need some answers. That's why, my buddy David Fisdale got fired. I think that's always in the back of the Knicks' mind, and I think you know LeBron could be a free agent this summer, could be a free agent next summer. Well, the Knicks will have money, so I think that definitely has a little bit to do with it. But if you looked at the Knicks situation, 76ers or Lakers, if, you, if you're LeBron here, why would you, for any reason other than, hey, I like Coach Fisdale, go to the Knicks? Well, I, I think a couple of things. Number one, What's Przingis' health going to be? Is it going to be out all next season? That obviously changes things. Can you make a couple of moves to try to bring somebody in? That changes it as well. But when the playoffs started this year in the East, a lot of people were saying, well, look at the Cavs. Oh, he, he used to have Kyrie and Kevin Love. Now he's only got Kevin Love as his second guy. They're not that good of a team. Now here they are. They look like the best team once again in the Eastern <laughs> Conference because that's how good LeBron is. So if you put a halfway decent roster around LeBron and he's going to be the centerpiece of it, in the East, you're going to rule. And that, I, that's my thing about him with going to the Lakers. And I think most people believe it could be the Lakers, could be Houston if he ends up leaving the Cavaliers. But, you know, you're, you're going into the belly of the beast. If you go to the Lakers, especially, you got Houston and you have Golden State that you have to compete with. When we know in the Eastern Conference, nobody has beaten him four times in seven games since he went to Miami at the start of the 2010 11 season, and it looks like that's probably going to be the case this year as well. Nobody in the East can beat this guy. How concerned would you be with that falling out in Memphis? It felt like it was David Fisdale and Marcus Saul, and they were at odds with each other, and then they decided to part with Fisdale. Is... Yeah, I, yeah, I have to be careful when mentioning that because I had the audacity to mention that in my story, and Nick fans got all upset. It's certainly part of it. I mean, he was there for 101 games, and they ended up firing him mostly because of his poor relationship with Marcus Soma. That doesn't mean that it's all David Fisdale's fault. It certainly doesn't mean that he won't have a great rapport with his players here. But in his first stint as a head coach, he was feuding with his best player. And it's not really known. You know, I think Marcus Soma is somewhat outspoken, a bit of a free spirit, but he was never really viewed as a malcontent before. So I, I, don't, I don't know how much you could put on him. So I think it's something, it certainly has to be in the back of your mind. And that's something I'm sure the Knicks had to consider when they brought him in, because remember, Dan, they're kind of painting him as the player whisperer yeah. in some ways. Yeah. All right, well, this is part of the story, too, his relationship with Marcus Hall. Again, it was his first ever job. Since then, he's been quoted as saying, it's something I have to learn from, player-coach relationship, that all guys don't always get along. I, I agree with him, and that doesn't mean he won't do a good job, but it certainly, as you just pointed out, it's part of the story. When do you think it happened where free agents stopped considering New York? As a, as a destination? I think uh, some Nick fans will tell you it's because of the low lowlifes in the media. That's why players don't want to come here. <laughs> I, th I, I think some of it has to do, there's a lot of things. You know, it's been a losing organization, somewhat dysfunctional. So I think when you arrive in New York, and I think Amari Stoudemire was willing to embrace it, Carmelo Anthony was willing to embrace it, kind of the pressure that comes along with, you're going to be the savior. And I think there's a lot of players that don't want to deal with that. I think there are probably some players, too, that figure, you know what? I love going to New York just like I love going to Atlanta, but I really don't want to play there year-round. I don't really want to live there with my family. We're not really the, the New York scene, so to speak. So I think there's been a lot of reasons why, why that has been the case. And it's, um, it frustrates Nick fans, absolutely. But look at it this way. You know, Russell Westbrook is in every darn commercial you ever see. Mm -hmm. He plays in Oklahoma City. You know, Anthony, I just saw Anthony Davis yesterday in commercials now. He plays in New Orleans. So the idea that you have to play in, you know, the biggest market. And the NBA playoffs this year are going along pretty well. You don't have L.A., you don't have Chicago, and you don't have New York in the playoffs. 
I guess I'm just curious. The Porzingis situation is what's really interesting there of just how serious this surgery was and the rehab and coming back. So, you know, trying to attract somebody, you know, I know the Knicks played hard. Uh, Hornacek probably didn't get a fair shake, but I just can't imagine any of the, you know, Paul George doesn't mention going to New York or, uh, yeah. you know, some of these other guys who have that opportunity. It just nobody mentions New York anymore. And to your point, you know, David Fizdale, after he got uh, fired from Memphis, was doing a lot of TV work, and he was actually quoted. He was on TV the day that the Przingis news came down about the injury, and he, and he said something along the lines of, you know, I thought New York would be a place where they could attract players because of Przingis. Now I don't think that's the case. So I don't think he's going to mention that at his press conference. <laughs> but, but even David Fizdale kind of hinted at that, where, you know, really the one attraction besides the garden and all the other stuff was Przingis, and I think, you know, players want to know if they're going to have a chance to win. I think a lot of guys look at Przingis as a, a very interesting player, but he might, you know, the owner, Jim Dolan, said about what is it, about a month ago, he threw out there the possibility that Przingis could be out the entire year yeah. next year, so that sets you back another season. Are you on Around the Horn today? Yes, I am. I heard, I, I guess Tony Reale made, he wants you to be on the show. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I haven't received an official offer, though, Frank. But he has a good he has a good idea though. He wants it to be you, Keith Olbermann, and a couple and a couple other guys, which I th- I think would be smart. I think. But see, here was what I said when he when he brought this up on the air. Mm-hmm. I was like, A, Dan Patrick doesn't need the work. We know he doesn't need the money. Why are you trying to get rid of me on the show? And I know you guys would do well, which would only make it worse for the rest of us. Then yeah. they'll turn it into celebrity around the horn, and you'll never see me on there again. So, and I don't want to do while that. I do think it's yeah, so while I do think it would be good for TV, it's not good for my career. And at this point, that's all I'm concerned about. Yeah. Well, there's so many of you writers I'd love to take down. I mean, I'd start with Callishaw. I'd bring Mariotti back for a cameo. What do you think? <laughs> We're not, you know what? We're not that hard to take down, believe it or not. And you know what? <laughs> when you think about people in the business, like the players that we cover, the coaches, the front office, and then, like, you know, you guys who came up in TV and radio, really – the biggest babies out of everyone are always the newspaper guys. Like if you come after us, that's when we really bite back. We can't take the, the criticism. We could certainly dish it out. I want to say one more thing. Okay. Every time I think of you, I think of the great, when you used to do the reports with, um, after the NBA finals games with the great late, uh, Jack Ramsey. Yes. He used to say, and if you get every sentence as well, Dan, I lo- I used to love that. You guys were great. Together. He was, you know what? I, I had so much respect for Jack because he coached my favorite basketball team of all time, the, the Blazers with Bill Walton. Yep. But the number of players, and I'm talking Hall of Famers, future Hall of Famers, who would come and talk to him after games in the NBA Finals. Akeem Olajuwon came to Jack Ramsey after every game of the NBA Finals, and he said, Dr. Jack, what did you see? And, and only if you yeah. went to him would he give you advice. And he would – it was like he was uh, Mr. Miyagi. It was really incredible. And he had set such a great heart, and he just wanted everybody to get better. And even Jordan would talk to Dr. Jack about that. And uh, so yeah, and, and very giving, very giving man. He was, he, was, you know, he was such a gentleman. But, like, the two of you in that setting when you it – was, it was just great. It worked. You know, the, the chemistry was good. It was always really entertaining. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. Uh, have fun tonight on uh, Around the Horn. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. I appreciate it. All right. It. That's uh, Frank Isola, New York Daily News. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.